By the way, this is still a carbonyl. It's not an aldehyde anymore, though. It's called a ketone now. Um, when the carbonyl is attached to two carbon chains, this is called a ketone. When it's only got, uh, when it doesn't have, um, here these are aldehydes, but when you have two carbon chains, this is called a ketone. That's so an perfect. aldehyde could be two H's or an R and an H? That's right. Okay. So both of these are aldehydes. There's only one that has two H's, right? This is the only possible way to have two H's, so most aldehydes look like this. Okay. Um, this is formaldehyde, by the way. All right. So anyway, um, that would take us to here. So we don't need to worry about uh, over-oxidizing. So that gave us this. All right, now, um, is there any way that we could get a tertiary alcohol? Yes, by adding another inferior alcohol. So again, we would add more R minus. And what would be our source of R minus? Either a Grignard or an alkyl lithium, as we've seen a couple times. So then we can draw this product over here. So now we've added our third R group. Um, I have a question. Yeah. If they say that you have a green yard and an alkyl lithium, could you just choose either one? Yeah, I, I, don't, th I don't think they would say that. But yeah, either of them work just as well. Okay. Either of them work just as well. Um, green yards are a little bit more standard, but you can use whichever you like. Okay. Um, and again, what I really mean here is a green yard followed by a separate step with H3O plus in order to protonate this oxygen over here. I just don't have enough space to show that um, over here. So what type of alcohol is this? This is a tertiary. Can this be oxidized? No. Because there's no carbon-hydrogen no carbon bonds. So what would happen if I added PCC to this? No reaction. So there's um, no, nothing, else to add to the, um, nothing else to add to the table down here. This is the end of the line. So I'm sure you're sad to hear that we can't keep continuing with this anymore. This is the end of the line because there's no more carbon-hydrogen bonds to break um, over here. Um, so this can't be oxidized. All right, so um, all, um, how can this be tested? Well, there's many different ways it can be tested. First of all, if they give you an alcohol and an oxidizing agent, you should be able to predict that that's going to produce an aldehyde or a ketone. Um, or if they give you an aldehyde or a ketone and a Grignard, you should be able to predict that that's going to give you an alcohol with one more carbon. But most interesting is synthesis. For example, suppose that they gave you this starting material and asked you, how can you get this product? Then you'd say, first I would add this, then 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 I would add this. Now, in an introductory class like this, that would be too much for one problem. Instead, they would probably say, how can I go from here to maybe uh, here? Usually, early they see maybe two or three step syntheses, or maybe four step syntheses. Um, but uh, so here, this, how many steps would it take to go from here to here? Three separate steps. So here you can see why it's important to have these in kind of a table. So you can see how you can go back and forth between all these different uh, ideas. We have to oxidize once, so then we can add the first grid yard, and then oxidize again to get to here. So again, how would this come up in the synthesis? They would give you this starting material and this product and say, what reagents do you need to add? And you would say, first I'd add PCC, then I'd add a grid yard, then I would add H3O+, plus, then I'd add PCC. So actually, I guess it would be four steps, right? because this is really two separate steps. First the Grignard and then the H3O+, plus, which have to be added separately. Of course, in a real problem, they wouldn't ask you for an R. They'd have a, speci a specific carbon chain over here. In a real problem, this might be an ethyl group over here. So you would know exactly what you would have. You wouldn't just say R minus. You would say an ethyl group with a minus charge. I just put an R here because I want this to be the general um, table that we would have. So that's the kind of way you would do synthesis. So how do you know when to use this? You have to watch for when the product has more carbons than the starting material. We've only learned one way to make a product with more carbons than the starting material. The only way to make a product with more carbons than the starting material is um, a Grignard. The only way to what? The only way to get a product with more carbons than the starting material is to add a Grignard or an alkyl lithium. That's our only way to make new carbon carbon bonds. Okay, well, a couple more things. Um, we noticed up in this first step that how do you reverse an oxidation? You wait till you're ready. H minus. You just add H minus. So I ran out of space, so I didn't show this. But all of these, you could just go backwards by adding H minus. And where would the H minus come from? Sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride? Only, you could only reverse the ones with PCC or K2Cr207, not? Uh, don't, don't worry. Uh, there, there are ways to reverse this, but we don't have to know that in the course right now. 
um, you're just going to be dealing with, the only reaction so, you have to know is how to uh, go from a carbonyl to a alcohol. So let's say that you start with a carbonyl and you want to make it into an alcohol. How should you do that? Well, it depends. If you want to make it into an alcohol with the same number of carbons as you started with, you should just add an H, an H minus, from a lithium uh, aluminum hydride or sodium borohydride. But if they want you to make a alcohol with one more carbon chain than you started with, then you should add R minus. So these are the two different ways that you can make an alcohol. You can either make an alcohol with the same number of carbons that you started with, or an alcohol with one more carbon. So there's lots of ways they can make synthesis what if problems. What you want to do with fewer carbons? You, you have not learned any ways to break carbon-carbon bonds. Okay. It's actually very hard to break carbon-carbon bonds. I think you guys are only going to learn one method this semester, and that'll be for the final. We haven't gone over that yet. Um, so, um, and not so far you've only learned one way to make carbon-carbon bonds, which is grignards and alkyl lithiums, which we've seen here. Um, so, so make an alcohol with more carbon bonds, or one with the same? Yeah using H minus or R minus. All right, so let's summarize all this in the handout. So uh, get the handout in front of you. You can see that what's in the handout is what I just put on the board, but I'm sure this might be a little neater than what's in your notes or what's, in my board, what's on the board right now. Uh, but what's here in the handout is what we just put on the board, right, uh, for this handout. On, uh, so this is a handout on oxidation of alcohols and reduction to foreign alcohols. You all know, looking at the same handout? Mm -hmm. Okay, oxidation of alcohols. You can see at the top it shows oxidation and reduction. It pretty much just summarizes everything that we just went over, um, over here and a couple things we didn't talk about. For example, in the middle, it mentions uh, every oxidation step involves breaking a CH bond, but the ketone has no uh, CH bond, so it can't be over-oxidized. And then at the bottom, it says the tertiary alcohol, the alpha carbon has no CH bond, so it can't be oxidized at all. So those are some important ideas uh, to know there. Uh, maybe one thing I should mention is, I've been kind of oversimplifying here. Um, one of the key issues here is you over-oxidize when you use water. And you don't over-oxidize if you don't use water. I don't think that's going to be too important in your course. It turns out that the only way you can avoid using water is PCC. So the real reason we're using PCC is to avoid using water. I didn't put that in the handout because a lot of instructors don't stress that. I think that might be a needless complication. But I, um, they might have mentioned that in lectures. That's a good thing to know. The real reason that we use PCC is to avoid using water. These, you have to use water, and that always causes you to, to over-oxidize. But I think for your purposes, it's good enough to know PCC is the safest oxidizing agent. It doesn't, it's not going to over-oxidize for you. So even though um, this can't be over-oxidized, so that's why you can add these, it can still make a reactant because there's still a double oxygen bond? This can oxidize once to a ketone. But it can't, but it can't over-oxidize oh. to a carboxylic acid. Oh, oh okay. Right. Over-oxidation is when we go this one extra step to a carboxylic acid. So this can oxidize once, so, but it can't uh, um, over-oxidize. Okay. Okay. Whereas the tertiary can't even oxidize once. The tertiary down here can't even oxidize once. If you look at the bottom of the handout, it covers the oxidizing agents that we talked about here. Mm -hmm. um, it also talks about the sources of H-, sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride. Um, notice that lithium aluminum hydride has to be used separately from H3O+. Again, we already talked about how that happens for Grignards, um, but sodium borohydride can be used at the same time as your protonator. We won't have time to talk about that too much, but um, sodium borohydride is a little bit different. And then there's the sources of R- on the right, the Grignard and the alkyl lithium, and those have to be used separately from the H3O+. Okay, this is a whole big thing, as you can see, a whole big thing of things that you can do with uh, Grignards, but uh, we did manage to summarize the key reactions uh, that we went through um, over here. Uh, so one more thing. Suppose that you want to add more carbons to this. How can you add more carbons to this? Well, one important thing, you can't add the Grignard to this. Right? I just want to make a point. Even if you want to add more carbons to this, you can't do it right away. Yeah, the only thing that we can add the more carbons to is this. So the first thing you have to do is oxidize it, and then you can add the Grignard. So again, it's important to think your way through the table um, over here. So learning what we learned, after learning what we learned now, do you think we'd be able to do the other kinds of synthesis problems that we learned? Now you have a fighting chance, yeah. But first you should do a bunch of predict the problem, okay. predict the product problems like this to get the hang of it. First you need to do a bunch of predict the product problems like this. And when you're getting those right, then you should be able um, to use this for synthesis. And that's right. Okay.